This is the largest camera-specific backpack that currently exists, at least as far as I know. My name is Josh Berman, I'm a wedding filmmaker, and I recently took this bag, the Think Tank First Light 46 liter, to shoot a destination wedding in Alaska. I shot this wedding solo and wanted to avoid bringing a checked bag if possible, which is why I wanted something big, so that I could pack all my camera gear into this backpack and use my carry-on luggage to pack my tripods, gimbal, light stand, and clothes. I've also taken this bag with me to a few local weddings. It's honestly so nice having a bag this big because I can fit all of my camera gear for an entire wedding into this single case. It really minimizes the amount of different bags I have to bring with me, and it makes it much easier to keep track of stuff throughout the day because everything is in the same bag in the same location. Quick disclaimer, Think Tank gave me this bag for this video, but this video is not sponsored by them, they did not pay me in any other way, they have no input or control over what I say, and they do not get to review this video before it goes live. Starting with the part of the bag that's going to get the most use, the main camera compartment, and something you'll notice right away is that this bag is a front access backpack, meaning that the front of the backpack is what folds open when you open the bag, versus a back access bag where the back panel and the shoulder straps are what folds open when you open it. Personally, I really dislike this. When you set the backpack on the ground to open it, the straps and the back panel of the bag are smushed into the ground. So if the ground is dirty or sandy or wet or whatever, all of that grossness is going right into the shoulder straps and consequently onto you. It's also less secure as theoretically somebody could walk up behind you and open the backpack while you're wearing it, something that's not really possible when it opens from the back. And finally, it's just more annoying to use. With a back access bag, I can sling it off my shoulder straight onto the ground and open it up. With the front access though, I have to turn it around first and then set it down. It's a very small thing, I know, but if you've used a back access bag, this is annoying. But back to the main camera compartment, this thing is huge. According to the product website, the interior is 13.4 inches wide by 20 inches high and 7.3 inches deep. My own measurements were a little bit different. The width is basically the same. The height is 19 inches, measuring from inside the padded wall and 20 inches if you measure outside of it. And the depth is about 6.8 to 7 inches. It's basically the size of a Pelican case. It's very, very large. On the lid flap here, we've got these four zippered mesh pockets. I love that these are here. They're so big and spacious too, which is great. Really, my only complaint is that they're made out of this fabric mesh material. And I've got another backpack that has the same type of material for these pockets. And over time, it's kind of started to rip where it touches some of the camera gear in the bag. Uh, this bag is very deep though, so it probably won't even touch the stuff inside, but I don't know. I wish it was like a plastic or something here. That way, it, you know, it's a little bit more abrasion resistant. Something I love about this bag and just kind of think tank products in general is just how many different dividers it comes with and the variety in sizes. There are 17 dividers in total here. Two large gray ones, two medium gray ones, four large blue ones, three medium blue ones, and six small blue ones. The gray dividers are fully soft Velcro, just like the inside of the bag, so you can stick anything to them anywhere. The large and medium blue dividers both have this strip of soft Velcro in the middle on both sides, and the small blue dividers are just completely smooth on both sides. There's also a lens support piece and two straps to kind of hold down your gear. I really love how many dividers they give you here. A lot of bags kind of skimp out on the dividers, so it's great to see them give you so many different ones here and the variety in sizes. I, again, just touch on that, it's so nice. I will say though that the smallest blue divider is not quite small enough for all the stuff that I wanted to put in here. So I actually ended up grabbing some dividers from a different backpack I had and throwing them in here just so I had a few smaller pockets. And the quality of the dividers is really great too. They're pretty stiff, which is something I really like. I hate when I get like really floppy dividers or even floppy backpacks because it doesn't feel like it's keeping my gear as safe. The Velcro strips on the large and medium blue dividers is a great touch. It makes it so much easier to position the dividers where you want them. It just kind of makes the bag more modular. My only real annoyance here is that they seem to have designed this bag to be set up in columns, and it's really hard to set it up in rows. Because the large gray dividers have so few articulation points, you can really only place them vertically. 
Now, as for how much gear this holds, I was able to fit two Canon C70s, two R6s, an EF70-200, an RF24-70, an EF24-70, an EF24-105, an RF70-200, a DJI Air 3 drone, the drone controller, a Rode VideoMic NTG, a 5-inch monitor, an SD card case, a top handle, three batteries for my C70, and I've still got a bit of space left over. I really appreciate how deep this bag is. The C70s are fairly tall cameras, comparable to a mirrorless camera with a battery grip, so it can be really hard sometimes to find bags that are deep enough to support them. But this bag is so deep I can actually fit my RF7200 standing upright. Usually you need to lay that lens down because it's so tall. Now I don't always bring this much camera gear to a wedding, so when I do have a little bit less to bring, I can rearrange the dividers and throw in my audio kit. Again, just cutting down on the amount of individual cases and bags I have to transport. Moving around to the front of the backpack, this is the other main compartment, and it is actually an expandable compartment. So if you undo this zipper, this whole front area expands. Inside here, you've got your laptop sleeve and a little zippered mesh pocket with some organization. Just like two little pockets right here and then just kind of an empty space in the front here. And then in front of that is just a big empty space. My 14 inch MacBook Pro fits very easily inside this laptop sleeve. And I was even able to fit my massive 17 inch Dell laptop in here. So you shouldn't have any issues getting your laptop to fit in here. If you expand this compartment, you do get quite a bit of added space. I'm sure you could put something like shirts or lightweight clothing in here if you were traveling, but I really love using it for my gimbal. If I disconnect the tripod feet, I can fit my whole DJI RS2 in the front compartment here. Now you won't be able to take it on an airplane like that. It's definitely too bulky. Um, and you probably don't wanna have a laptop in the sleeve if you're putting a gimbal in the front here, just cause it might smash into it or something. But it is so useful for local weddings. I can just chuck it in this front pocket and I'm good. The final large compartment on this bag is this, the top pack. And I really don't like this thing. In fact, I took it off immediately when I got the bag, as you can see. It's just kind of a weird design. It connects to the backpack with four straps, two anchor points in the front and two in the back here. And then you've got these buckles so that you can detach the bag quickly and you don't have to like go through the process with the anchors again. But when it's fully attached to the bag, the two front straps here prevent the backpack from opening completely. As you can see, the zipper runs right into it. So every time you wanna open the backpack, you have to unbuckle these two front pieces at minimum and flip it back just to be able to get into the backpack. It's so tedious. One of the key features of this top pack is that you can fully detach it from the backpack and wear it as a waist bag, which works pretty well from a technical standpoint, but it looks so weird. It's a super strange shape to be worn around the waist, and from a more practical standpoint, it's pretty bulky. Plus, the pocket that's built into it is just one massive pocket. There's no organization or dividers built in, just a big empty space. I could see this being useful for gloves or a beanie or something like that, but you're not gonna wanna put anything small or even remotely fragile in here because it's just gonna bang around and crash into anything else that's in there. All in all, I feel like this top pack is a pretty big miss. The fact that it has to be unbuckled in order to open the backpack is the biggest annoyance. And just the design in general doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me. Aside from the main three compartments, there are also some additional pockets. My favorite of these is definitely this little pocket at the very top of the bag. If you take that top pack off, you get access to this big handle and under that is this little tiny pocket. It's perfect for stashing like your wallet or your keys up here. It's super handy. I This is one of my favorite pockets on this bag. <laughs> There's also this small little pocket on the front right here. It's got felt on the inside, so it's perfect to slip like your phone or something in there. Although because it is on the very front of the bag, I would be very cautious about putting anything valuable in there, especially if you're gonna be walking around in a big crowded area. It's be so easy for somebody just to walk up, unzip that little thing and grab whatever is in there. Over on the sides here, we've got two water bottle pockets. I really like these, they're designed well. They've got the right amount of stretch and tension here. You could also use these for tripod storage as there are straps on 
the top here and on the bottom to really secure like a tripod or a monopod to the side of the bag. On the right side of the bag, there is a long slim pocket. Not entirely sure what this thing is designed to hold. It's kind of a weird shape with it being so long. You can't really put small items in there because they'll get knocked around and you risk them spilling out as you open the pocket. But it's also so slim that you can't fit larger items in there either. I just kind of ended up sticking USB cables and different charging cables in there because that's kind of what worked the best for me. And on the front of the bag at the very bottom is this little Velcro pocket that holds the tripod cup. Under the top pocket up here is some straps that you can secure the tripod to the front of your bag with. One thing to note though is that in this configuration with the tripod on the front, the tripod will extend past the bottom of the bag so you won't be able to set it down like normal, you'll have to lay it down. As for the size of this bag, it's big. It's very, very big. <laughs> the product website lists the dimensions as 13.8 inches wide, 21.7 inches tall, and nine inches deep. And I measured it at about 14 and a half inches wide, 21 inches tall, and you add on about a half an inch if you wanna include the top pack and about 10 inches deep, including the back padding and the straps. For comparison, this is what it looks like next to the Nomadic Peter McKinnon 25 liter camera bag, the original Lowepro ProTactic 450, and Camret's Lyra backpack. It is a pretty heavy bag at about six pounds. When it comes to construction, this thing is very sturdy. It's very solid. And it's also very rigid, which is something I really like. I really prefer my camera backpacks to have a very defined structure to them. I hate when camera bags are really flexible and floppy. It makes me nervous that my gear is just gonna get crushed or damaged more easily if I drop the bag. The bag itself also stands upright, as you can see right here. I absolutely love that it has this flat base. I've used so many backpacks in the past that don't have a flat base, and it's so annoying having them constantly fall over and not being able to easily set them down. The materials used on this bag are very high quality. It is made out of a nylon type fabric, so if you prefer a more slick, rubbery texture, you're not gonna get that here. The fabric is water repellent though, and the bag comes with a dedicated rain cover. The handles on this backpack are fantastic, and it's got a ton of them. There's two on the top, one on the side, and one on the bottom. The big one on the top might be my favorite handle I've ever used on any camera bag ever. It's big and comfy to hold. It also folds down flat when you're not using it. I also love that it's positioned right in the middle of the bag so that when you pick it up, the bag isn't like tipping forwards or tipping backwards or something like that, and it's really easy to grab. The little handle right behind it is for when you have the top pack attached, that way you still have a top handle, which is great. Love that they actually thought that through. <laughs> on the left side, you've got the same big handle as on the top. I really love when bags have this handle on the side. It makes it so much easier to load the bag in and out of a car or pull down from an overhead bin on an airplane. The handle on the bottom is just a webbing strap so that it stays more flat to the bottom of the bag. Again, so helpful that this is here. I really love when bags have that bottom handle. I do think this backpack has a problem with straps though. Not, not with the quality, the quality is just fine. There's just a lot of them. You've got four straps on each side of the bag, a chest strap, two shoulder adjustment straps, two adjustment straps for the main shoulder pads, a waist strap, and if you attach the top pack, you've got four more straps. They're everywhere, and it can get kind of annoying when you're wearing the bag because you've just got straps flopping around everywhere. I wish some of them were removable, like these two straps on either side of the bag for the tripods. I wish those could just detach from the bag itself, or at least if they had better, like, strap management. These ones on the sides don't even have little elastic bands to hold them in place, so they really do just flop everywhere. Like I said earlier, this is a big bag, and it kind of shows, both from a visual aspect and when you wear it. Putting this thing on, you feel like you're wearing a large, bulky backpack. I especially notice the width of it. It feels quite bulky in that respect. And from a visual aspect, this thing just looks big. It looks like you're wearing a big hiking backpack or something like that. Now, even though this thing is very big, it's still very comfortable. The padding on the back and the shoulder straps is very nice. It's also got this torso adjustment here and these top cinch straps on the shoulder straps. The torso adjustment allows you to change where the backpack sits on your back, whether you want it higher up or lower down, and the cinch straps will pull the top of the bag closer to your back, which helps quite a bit with the weight. Like most backpacks, it's also got a chest strap and a waist belt. The chest strap is really great. You can buckle it with one hand, which is not something I had ever thought about before this bag, but 
now I don't want to use a chest strap that doesn't do that. But that's where we get to my other big complaint with this backpack. The waist belt does not come off. It's permanently attached, which to me seems like the biggest oversight of this whole backpack. I don't understand why anyone would make a bag with a non-removable waist belt, especially a camera bag. And this is what it looks like to walk around without the waist belt buckled. It totally gets in the way and there's not really anything you can do about it. You just have to buckle it every single time or it's flopping around everywhere. Now, there is one thing that you can do to kind of fix this. If you wrap the belt around the front of the bag and buckle it backwards, you can effectively get rid of it but this also introduces another problem. Now, every time you want to open the bag, you have to unbuckle the waist belt and buckle it again when you close the bag because the waist belt is covering the zippers to the main camera compartment. This is seriously so annoying. I love the waist belt for long days of air travel where I'm standing around with a heavy bag in an airport, but outside of that, it's incredibly bothersome. <laughs> Luckily, I was able to find a little bit of a workaround for this belt. Aside from just straight up cutting it off, I did find a way to secure it without it getting in the way of opening the bag. I grabbed two small carabiners and hooked them onto these little loops on the very front of the bag. And then I took two bongo ties and wrapped those around where the waist strap kind of meets the padded belt part. And I hooked the carabiner onto those bongo ties. This pulls the waist belt into the same position it would be in if I buckled it around the front, but I don't have to buckle it around the front, which means that I can still open the front of the bag without it being blocked in any way. It works really well, and now the belt is out of the way and not blocking the front of the backpack from opening. Plus, everything is reversible, so if I ever want to use the waist belt again, all I have to do is unclip the carabiners. Now, don't get me wrong. I still think that this waist belt is horrible, and I really, really wish that they would have done something different here but at least like this, it's not constantly getting in the way and it's not preventing me from opening the front of the bag. The one thing it does do though, is it kind of prevents you from using the water bottle pocket because it's pressed in so tightly against the bag. So if you do want to put a water bottle in here or a tripod in there, you do kind of have to unclip the waist belt to be able to do that. At the beginning of the video, I mentioned that my goal for Alaska was to avoid bringing a checked bag if possible, and instead pack all of my camera gear into this backpack and use my carry-on luggage to pack my tripods, gimbal, light stand, and clothes. What I didn't take into account with that plan was just how heavy this backpack would be with all of my camera gear and laptop inside it. I was able to fit everything into this bag and all the other stuff into the carry-on. The backpack ended up weighing 36 pounds though. If I was doing a local wedding, that'd be no problem. But walking around an airport for multiple hours wearing a 36 pound bag would absolutely wreck my body. And certain airlines do have weight restrictions for carry-on and personal items. So I decided to add a checked bag and shift some of my camera equipment to the carry-on, which was definitely the right move. Doing that helped a lot and the bag was perfectly comfortable to wear once I shifted some gear to the carry-on. Here's what my experience was flying with this bag. I ended up taking four flights in total during this trip, all of them being Delta flights. I took this backpack with me as a personal item and brought a wheeled suitcase as my carry-on. Now, like I've already said, this bag is big, about the size of most carry-on luggage, and I was trying to fit it under the seat. The first flight I was on, I sat in the basic seating area, and I actually wasn't able to get this bag under the seat. It wasn't because the bag was too big to fit under there, though. It was because the rows of seats were so close together that when I put the bag in between them, I didn't have enough room to smush it underneath the seat in front of me. Luckily, the flight wasn't very full, so I was able to put it in an overhead bin along with my carry-on luggage. So that worked out pretty well. The second flight I was on, I was sitting in the Comfort Plus seating area and the bag was easily able to slide under the seat in front of me. On the trip home, I was back in basic seating for both flights and fully expected to need to put this bag in the bin but I actually got it to fit under the seat this time. If you slide the bag under the seat with the back facing the floor, it won't go. I'm not sure why, but it just won't fit. However, if you flip it around so that the front of the bag is facing the floor, you can get it to slide under there. If you're sitting in an aisle seat though, this won't work. The aisle seats have much smaller under seat spaces and are too narrow to fit this bag. During one of the return flights, I wanted to grab my laptop from the front of the bag and ran into another big issue. It is extremely hard to pull this bag out from under the seat while you're sitting. I eventually got it, but I really had to squish this thing to get it out and then back under. With this bag being so big, it's 
really not designed to fit under airplane seats. Yes, you can make it work, but it is such a pain. <laughs> if you're considering getting this bag with the plan to use it for air travel, I would kind of plan to use it more as a carry-on item and less as a personal item. Also, if you're going to be flying internationally, you may run into some issues with this. Some of those international airlines have pretty strict size restrictions for carry-on and personal items, so be careful of that. Walking around the airport with this thing was great though. It was plenty comfortable and the waist strap was very helpful with weight management. It's a real bummer that this bag doesn't have a luggage pass through though. Being able to throw this on top of my wheeled suitcase would have been really nice. I actually tried this once even though the bag doesn't have the pass through strap and it actually kind of worked. The suitcase I was using was very square, so the backpack was able to just sit right on top of it, and the small little top handle was in the perfect place for me to grab as I grabbed the suitcase handle. I wouldn't trust it going over bumps or steep inclines, but it worked surprisingly well. All right, final thoughts on this thing. I think this is a really good bag, but it's not amazing. I love how much stuff I'm able to fit in here. It's really nice having my entire kit inside a single bag rather than having to bring two or three camera bags to a wedding. And it makes it so much easier to remember where a specific piece of gear is because it's all inside the one backpack. I also really appreciate the build quality of this bag. It's very solid and the structure is quite rigid. It feels like a good middle ground between a hard case like a Pelican and a backpack. Love all the handles on this bag. I wish every backpack had these handles. It's so much easier to lift and move the bag when it has grab points all around it. It's also very convenient being able to slip my gimbal into this front compartment here, not having to carry that separate or throw it into a different bag, just having it all right here. Having this be a front access bag and not a back access bag is a pretty big bummer though. I was going to the beach for a shoot recently and decided to take a different backpack over this one simply because of this not having back access. If I lay this bag down on a beach, all of that sand is going straight into the foam padding and it is not coming back out. And my biggest complaint with this bag is definitely the waist belt. I really don't like the waist belt. It's so frustrating, especially because almost every other backpack out there has a removable waist belt. I do not understand the decision to permanently attach it here. And that alone kind of makes me not want to use this bag very often. Even with my fix for it, the bag still feels extra bulky with it there, and it does make it harder to use the side pockets like I was saying. Think Tank, if you ever make a version two of this backpack, please, please make the waist belt removable and maybe consider adding the back access. Because of how large this bag is, I don't really think it's made for everyone. It is really nice for packing all of your camera gear into a wedding. It'd also be great if you have larger cameras like the C70 or the C300 or FX6. But if you're someone who shoots with two, maybe three smaller mirrorless cameras, you probably don't need a backpack this big. I think its biggest benefit for wedding filmmakers and photographers is the ability to pack all of your camera gear into a single case. As I was using this bag during the Alaska wedding, I had to keep moving locations throughout the wedding day, the getting ready area to a couple portraits, a couple portraits to the ceremony, the ceremony to the reception, and every time I went to pick up this bag, it just felt so massive, and I was starting to get annoyed with how big it was, but then I started to think about it a little bit differently. If I thought of it as a backpack, I found myself getting very frustrated with it because it was so bulky, but if I thought of it as a hard case, like a Pelican, it became a lot nicer in my mind. As soon as I saw it as a hard case with backpack straps, suddenly it was kind of like the best version of a hard case because in comparison to a hard case, this is super fast and easy to pick up and carry. Having a backpack this large, you kind of have to adjust your expectations a little bit. It's not going to be that super nimble bag that you can just throw over your shoulder and run off. This is essentially a hard case with backpack straps. So you are going to give up some of that lightweight, slim profile, but you're gaining a ton of storage space and it is still a backpack, so you have more freedom to move compared to an actual hard case. But anyway, this is the Think Tank First Light 46 liter backpack and that's all for me. Bye.